Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where and when you're watching this newscast. Welcome to This is the Week That Was, in virtualization, cloud and EUC, brought to you by the Virtualization Practice. I'm Tom Howarth, and welcome to our latest video news roundup. First, the headlines. Google and Oracle have fought their spat out in the about Java APIs in court. Midacura have raised a further two hundred, sorry, a further twenty million in a Series B round to fund them for the next couple of months. VMware have released version four point, sorry, two point five of VMware integrated OpenStack, and finally, buyer beware, a Microsoft patch breaks VMware networking. Okay, first, Oracle and Google. This is a long-running case, been going on since two thousand and twelve. Uh, regards the use by Google, sorry, yeah, use by Google of APIs written in Java, who Oracle now own by virtue of their purchase of some microsystems. Originally, the judge in the district court case ruled that APIs were not copyrightable, and obviously Oracle appealed that. The federal court said that they were copyrightable, and Google appealed that it went to the federal went to the Supreme Court who then basically threw it back down to the district court saying they had the ability to fair use that's gone to court recently and yes Google do have the right of fair use so that means everyone can rest a little bit easier because Oracle can't come round and hammer them but it still leaves the fact that APIs can be copyrightable. We do not believe that this is the correct answer. Now, of course, this isn't the end of it because Google, being the litigious beast that they are, have already stated that they're going to appeal this decision that APIs are covered through fair use. So, once again, this is not the end of the story. We'll keep you updated. Uh, apparently, this week, the federal court in in California are going to be choosing jurors. It's going to be interesting because the judges basically stated that um, neither attorney, neither attorneys for the plaintiff or the defendants can actually Google the anything about the about the jurors to stop them being able to basically temper their temper their um, arguments with the mind of the jurors in place to basically t cause them grief. It's going to be an interesting case. We're virtualization practice is going to keep following it. I personally have an interest in it because I'm a legally trained analyst with a degree in law, and this has really piqued my interest. Midacura have raised a further 20 million in a series B round. This is going to help them move their products further, which is good news for them. VMware, they have released the latest version of VMware integrated OpenStack. This is now at version 2.5. It now gives you greater integration into NSX and a, much less, a less cumbersome management control plane uh, this, what's interesting about this is they seem to be VMware seems to be spending quite a lot of the development time on OpenStack and I think this is more of a view that they've recognised vCloud Director did not set the world on fire vCloud Air has not set the world on fire and obviously they want some bit of this butty OpenStack is starting to mature it's not as much of a science project as it used to be so let's wait and see buyer beware microsoft has released a convenience upgrade patch for windows 7 and server 2008 r2 sp1 now this update has some serious compatibility issues with virtual machines running on vSphere the put my teeth back in. The incompatibility is related to networks that use VMX Net3, which 
90% of these will do. And what happens is once you've installed this patch, you effectively have a new Ethernet VNIC that's created with the default settings in place of your previously pre-existing VNIC. Now, VMware's view is to resolve the issue to uninstall the convenience roll-up. So Microsoft are currently investigating this matter to determine the proper course of action with VMware. And as soon as we have a, a better answer, we'll tell you what it is. Alternatively, don't install the convenience update. On top of that, if you have to install a convenience update, you've got a much more pr problematical and systematic issue with the fact that you've not updated probably for about the last two years, which is a bigger issue. Okay, on to news from our sponsors. Veeam have announced that Jeff Goldstein is to be their Vice President of Sales in Canada. This is an indication of the growth of the Canadian market to Veeam. Now, prior to Veeam, Jeff was Vice President and General Manager of NetApp Canada. In 2001, he helped create the NetApp's Canadian subsidiary and to scale the business from 15 people to and a 17 million revenue to more than 250 million revenue and 125 million 125 people 125 million that would be a seriously large company and a lot more than what's actually living in Canada but hey ho so he was involved in all aspects of the business including sales pre post sales engineering etc etc and it's a very personally I think it's a very good hire for Veeam AppNetta have released application monitoring for their applica for applications built in Golang. This is uh, useful for AppNetta. It further enhances their solution. Cerber have released the latest version of their product. It's now at version 9. And to use their own PAR lists, you can now play Tetris with your workloads across and between multiple clouds and local-based environments. Manage Engine have released a comprehensive reporting solution for Office 365, which provides detailed reports on mailbox sizes, content, traffic flow, and active mailboxes, and insights into licensing. Their application, <coughs> their application manager product has been extended to provide support for NoSQL. And finally, they have added key management capability into their privileged identity management suite. So you can download a 30-day trial of their software from their site. Puppet Labs have announced availability of new modules for the project BlueShift. BlueShift is focused on bridging the gap between today's reality and tomorrow's reality by automating the delivery of applications. So be that to containers running on AWS or Google Cloud Services, etc. Or to updating middleware on your mainframes. I would like to welcome SwiftStack to our site. They're a provider of an object-based storage system which enables on-site deployments to have public storage functionality, public cloud storage functionality. This interesting technology is built on SwiftStack, so OpenStack Swift, and is not a fork, it's actually native Swift, so provide no vendor locking, very, very nice. Currently at version four. Now all that remains is to thank you for listening and to remind you that if you see anything that you think is newsworthy, please forward it to News at Virtualization Practice and who knows, it may be in next week's videocast. Thank you and goodbye.